All right, we'll go ahead and reconvene the Board of Wildlife Commissioner's meeting uh, in Reno, March 20th, from item 8C, which is commission positions and platforms on bills. We did get through the committee recommendations. Uh, again, what I'd like to do is identify bills um, going forward that the Legislative Committee can take up and review on uh, April 1st at their meeting. Um, at this point, I've been started an initial list. So SB4 was referenced back to the committee. That's the one on trapping uh, and the private property exemption. Um, SGR 11 has been brought up. That's the constitutional amendment. Uh, there was a bill on ivory that we had, and I don't have a number on that. Uh, there was a bill on feral cats. I don't have a number on that. Uh, and there was a bill regarding OHBs. Really for the record, um, the, the AB 261 is the feral cat bill, colony bill. AB 217 is one of the OHV bills. That's the one that eliminates. Could you repeat that, please? AB 217 it, uh, currently it, it appears as it eliminates OHV registration, but we hear it will be amended. Um, <clears throat> and then I said AB 261 was the feral cat colony bill. Um, a, you didn't ask for it, but AB 335 is the other trapping bill. And AB 338 is also a trapping bill. Uh, and a shed antler bill that I mentioned earlier. So I put those on your list. What was the second one, Tim? AB 335 and AB 338. That's the one that includes shed antler? Mm-hmm. AB 338? Mm-hmm. That would change it from must to may registration. And then uh, has the shed antler just to regulate commercial. And then AB 408 is another public lands bill. And... one on ivory mm -hmm. and the other OHV oh, bill. Can I add one more? SB 221 is a fence roller bill. The department testified in support of that. Prevents coyotes. Uh, it, it, it's actually a bill to prohibit homeowners associations from prohibiting fence rollers for the residents to use. Um, and then SB 235 is a wild horse bill. Um, SB 278 is the other OHB bill. That's just uh, eliminating the notary requirement. And then the IV <coughs> bill is SB 398. Um, SB 387 is another wild horse bill. And then uh, let's see, SB 417 is a, it was intended as a bill to protect sensitive data um, of wildlife during the season, um, but it's kind of general right now, so we don't want to look at that probably. <clears throat> and then you said SJ or 11. So with that, I think we've got a pretty complete list, but I would ask um, for public comment in regards to any other bills that you'd like the Legislative Committee uh, to take a look at at this time. So public comment in Reno on that. You're just going to look at that, right? That's the list that we'll have, and if there's others that pop up, we'll add it to the Legislative Committee agenda on April 1st. And I don't need to stand here. Okay. Mr. Reese, did you? Yeah, if you'd like to provide any kind of input on those bills, you can at this time. Um, but these are the bills that the Legislative Committee will consider at April 1st, and we obviously reserve the right to add more. So what's on our list right now is SB4 in regards to trapping and private property, 
SJR, which is a constitutional amendment on hunting, fishing, and trapping, SB 398, which has to do with ivory, AB 261, which has to do with feral cat colonies, AB 217 on OHVs and the possible elimination of the registration program, AB 335 in regards to trapping, AB 338 in regards to trapping and shed antlers, AB 408. Kim, which one was that? Oh, uh, which is a public lands bill. SB 221, which is on fence rollers for coyotes and uh, homeowners associations. SB 278, uh, which is on notarized uh, letters for OHV titling. SB 235 and SB 397 on wild horses. And SB 417 regarding sensitive data for wildlife. And for the record, Mike Reese, uh, Clark County Cab. Uh, we did address at the Cab uh, in our last meeting, uh, SB, uh, SJR 11. Um, in your notes back for our Cab report, it says in unanimous vote, five to one. Obviously, it wasn't unanimous. We did have a dissenting vote on it. The dissenting vote was they think there's a different avenue to accomplish uh, preserving uh, the right to hunt, trap, and fish. Um, let me take that hat off of me personally. I support this bill. I think uh, right now there's been uh, 18 states that have adopted it. 17 of them have gone through the legislative session. The 18th one was Vermont that's been in their constitution since 1777. Right now as we speak, there is 12 other states uh, throughout that are having some form of that bill being introduced. Uh, I know West Virginia's got three separate bills Basically, I'll try to achieve the same thing. In our state right here on SJR 11, it is now the third largest and most popular bill on the uh, website. We've got 1,434 comments, 1,040 of them are in favor of it, 394 are against. Uh, as I did some research, the 394, a lot of those votes are coming from out of state. Uh, I was shocked to know that they didn't take in input from any part of the country, even though it's a Nevada bill. But uh, be as it may, I just want to make a note of that. So, thank you. Additional comment on the bills? And Mitch, come on up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mitch Pizzetti for the Oakville County Cab. My bird had to step out. So, uh, we did vote on SJR 11, and uh, we voted unanimously to uh, support that bill. So, that was all I had. Thank you. For the record, Darren Elmore, um, I am the sportsman's representative on the Nevada Commission of Off-Highway Vehicles. All I would tell you in regards to AB 217 at the commission level is that in last week's meeting we did vote to oppose AB 217 as it was written. We are hoping that um, this, the sponsors of the bill are open to some friendly amendments. Um, to take off my commissioner's hat. And just address you as a, a passionate sportsman who's uh, well informed on this subject. Um, the OHV Commission has not been a shining star of good government in the two years since its inception. That isn't because of a lack of well intentioned collaboration in the beginning or action at the commission level. Uh, we basically have had zero hand holding, shepherding through uh, the process, and we have fallen in. Some, some quite interesting pitfalls. We have tried to distribute the money once. That action was tossed out. Um, we're in the process of, of redoing our initial grant process. We will give law enforcement grants out here in the next three months. Uh, there's $200,000 available, and I sure hope that um, endows wardens will come asking for some funds, given that we tried to give them some funds in the first round. But it all boils down to the, the program has not had an opportunity to pass or fail on the merits of the intention. Um, and now, while it's quite easy and politically popular to point at it and say, look at this bad government, let's get rid of it, um, we're really cutting a, a, a infancy, a program off that's maybe in its infancy or at the elementary level off at the knees. And ultimately, I think sportsmen, wildlife lose, and the commission, or the endow loses the opportunity to dip into an additional money bucket 
um, to defray costs or potentially do some, some very good things for wildlife and sportsmen. So we hope that the, I hope that the sponsors will look at some very friendly amendments. We provided them with that information, um, but I would ask that, that Endow and the commission um, oppose this bill as written because it eliminates an, a real funding opportunity in the long term. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Boger, come on up. Karen Boger, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, Nevada Chapter. Um, I would just say ditto to what um, Village Food Commissioner Elmore said, but um, also want to give you just a little bit of a historical background on that. Since I have gray hair, I take um, great liberties to do that sort of thing. Some of you in the room were, were there during that long decade of uh, slug fights to get this legislation passed years ago, and I know um, Chairman Drew and myself bear some significant scars from all that. But finally, we realized that in order to get legislation passed, we had to get a whole disparate group of stakeholders together to do it. Because coming from just one viewpoint or another, it was not going to get it done. So um, the result was a commission that has a representative of each one or a combination of those stakeholders. Um, and uh, Jaren happens to wear the hat that represents us on that commission. And so um, whatever fix we have for that program, I think it's really important to listen to what the commissioners have come up with in terms of some legislative fixes that will actually make this program begin to function in the way that we all had hopes that it was. Because frankly, we're all, all our members, I know, and certainly the Nevada Co um, Coalition for Wildlife have been very frustrated over the years that it's just not functioning. Even though we know the reasons, there's great explanation, but for God's sake, you know, let's just fix it. But that said, um, wearing my backcountry hunter hat, I have been to talk to both Assemblywoman Titus and Senator Bobachia, the sponsors of the bill, and both of them have said to me, and granted this is anecdotal, so I can't really speak for them, but they did say to me uh, that they didn't intend to throw the whole program out and that they would like to make some fixes to make it work. Well, that was reassuring to some point, but it also makes me a little nervous as are these amendments that they might come up with not real, be well-intentioned, but maybe have some unintended con consequences that are going to tick off some one of those stakeholder groups or another. So long-winded way of saying that I hope you will really give some good thought to um, what the OHG commissioners have come up with. I hope that um, Commissioner Gilmore is going to get that list to you in terms of thinking what sort of fixes could be proposed um, to our legislators. And um, last of all, wearing my um, board of Nevada's <coughs> Coalition for Wildlife, just simply to say that we voted at our last meeting to oppose the bill for the sake of letting this barely breathing baby <laughs> try to breathe for two more years, and then we'll assess it and see if we need to pull the plug at that time, which personally, I hope we don't, but that's my other hat. Okay, thank you. Additional comments on legislative items or items that folks would like us to keep track of? Okay, the question was raised earlier in terms of cabs and public and what bills they could read um, between the report that came out of the committee that we just addressed uh, at this meeting and the bills that we just listed. I think those are the ones that folks want to keep track of um, again, the best way to do that is through the Nellis system, and on the committee report, the link for that is, is there, and we'll work to get the list of uh, bills of interest up and activated um, as soon as possible. So, With that, I don't think we need any further commission action unless there's any other discussion on agenda item 8C. Seeing none, we'll move to agenda item